as easy as that. Check out the wings. Morning guys, got something a bit different for you today. As you can see, we're at Titoro boat ramp on the Manukau Harbour. It's winter time so I thought I'd go out in the harbour and try to catch a gurnard. It's a nice calm day today, it's about an hour before low tide. So we'll get out there, pick a spot, throw the anchor down and um, hopefully it all goes off on the incoming tide. There's a few other boats out there today. But we'll get the ski ready and drop it in the water. Foggy morning today, don't know whether you can see it on camera. A little bit foggy. It's actually quite warm for the middle of winter. It's about 14 degrees in the car on the way here. It um, has been as close as almost zero a few of these mornings. But that's good, it means I won't freeze my tits off. We've got about a 10-15 minute steam ahead of us. We're not going out too far. because um, You don't need to go out too far for Gurnard, just the way your channel is fine. But yeah, I'll go perch up in a nice looking spot and I've actually got bait with me today which is something a bit different and we're going to drop the anchor down. So a few different things today but I feel this is usually the best way to target Gurnard so I'll show you how I do it. Basically there's a channel just over here, you actually see a um, sandbar marker and there's a big sandbar that runs around here and generally for Gurnard on the incoming tide I like to be quite shallow, sort of 5 metres and under and on the low tide I usually prefer to be a little bit deeper, maybe 6 to 8 metres but um, you never want to be fishing in the channel itself for Gurnard because they're always feeding up on the sandbags down in the um, depths of the channels there's not not really a lot of food down there for them so just the edges of the sandbars and the edges of the channels are where I normally go targeting them I've got a spot up here that I've caught a lot of going at before there's not really anything in particular here it's just a sandy bottom which is in between a sandbar and a channel so it's usually about eight meters deep so it might be a little bit shallower been low tide but I've caught fish here before so I'll see if I can catch fish here again. Check the anchor down. So we're in 5.7 meters here. really recommend anchoring on a jet ski as jet skis and anchors don't really mix so a lot of people get the anchor whoops sucked up into the jet unit and then that leaves them stranded ultimately which is not good Feels like the tide's already coming in. Right, so what I've got here, I've got a separate rope on the bow, just tied off to the tow hook, and that loops back onto this bungee, and I can tie that up out of the way. And I just tie my main anchor rope onto a loop halfway down that rope, and then keep this bungee up here so I can retrieve it when I'm done. Uh, one of the keys for anchoring on a jet ski is you never want to have your engine running if there's rope in the water. Never ever, because that's just asking for trouble. So yeah, you can see that's pulled up alright now. There's not actually any load on this rope, because the bow rope on the front will take the load. 
it's just a simple anchor setup and I think we'll get our rods ready and start fishing. So how do you catch a gurnard do you ask? What I've got today is basically a BDI Kibura, that's a 28 gram and I've got a 60 gram Kibura on the other rod. Orange is always a colour of light for gurnard. And what I'm also doing is I've brought out a pack of pilchers with me. And I'll just chop them up into a cube and then chop that cube in half down the centre, down the spine. And you'll have like a little sort of fillet of pilchard. The smaller the better really. And just stick one of them on one of the hooks and just for a bit of added attractant. And a lot of people, a lot of people use um, like a dropper egg or a flasher egg. And um, they work well, but these I find work just as good, if not better. And they have pretty low resistance in the current as well, so they're nice and easy to fish in the harbour. I find the gurnard like anything that's sort of really wriggly. So the skirts on the Kibera seem to fit that. Fit that description really well. You only need light gear. Under 10 pound is fine. And you just want to drop that right down near the bottom. You can stick it in a holder. Even if it's just bouncing on the bottom is pretty good. So that's it, I've got two rods in the water. One out that side. One out that side. Got a pilchard defrosting down there. Uh, you want to keep them um, pretty frozen because they'll stay on the hook longer if they're frozen can be a problem with filters they get quite soft but yeah we'll just kick back here for a while and see what happens quite a nice relaxing way of fishing this is actually pretty bloody comfortable <laughs> leaning against the handlebars like this used to do a lot of fishing on the Manukau harbour when we first got a boat in the family I used to do a lot of fishing as a kid and then I sort of went off it through my teenage years but uh, then later on in life we got a boat in the family and we were out fishing the Manukau Harbour pretty much every weekend and that started the addiction again and been back into fishing ever since really so I've got a special place in my heart for the Manukau Harbour there's some bloody good fishing here to be had if you know what you're doing We just had a bit of interest from something. There you go. See, it's as easy as that. There's a nice gurnard. Pulling a bit of string. See, I feel like they're quite predatory fish, so if they see something with little tentacles and it's moving about, they're going to want to jump on it. And that's actually a bloody good gurnet. For well, the first one, <laughs> yes! He's actually a bit of a donkey. Nice fish. Oh, shit, he's fat too. It's as easy as that. Now, 
for all you overseas guys that watch my channel, check out the wings. Quite amazing colours on these guys and they've got little legs underneath. That they walk along the ground with. Really cool fish and really good eating. That's it, a little 28 gram BDI Kavura. So we've got that other jig on the other side, which is a very similar jig, has the same bait on it, in exactly the same area. But they wanted this one because I was moving it around and it looked like it was alive. Feels like another one. Feels like another good one too. Not as big as the last one. Still a good fish. One in the bin. Just chuck another little bit of bait on here. Quite a big bit of bait by my standards. Send it back down. So I've got the rod on the left and the rod holder. And I haven't caught anything on that one yet. And I've just got this one on the right hand side in my hand. Just really gently bouncing it up and down off the bottom. And I've caught two on this so far. So just giving your bait a little bit of action definitely seems to make the difference. Never hurts to have one out the other side as well though, just sitting there. You never know what's going to come along. You can prioritise one rod and just keep giving it a little bit of action. Seems to always work way better for me. I'm biting. Oh. Drop it straight back down. He's on it, oh no. Oh, there's something down there having a go. There we go. <laughs> oh, he's gone. He's gone. See, but they come back again and again. See if 
if he'll come back. Oh, yeah. There we go. Feels like another gurnard. <laughs> We've actually got one on the other rod as well, I think. It's this guy's gone around it. Bit of a smaller one. I think I might even let him go. It's well legal. Look at that. Beautiful wings on them. But he's quite small. Considering what sort of average size you normally get in winter. I think it's worth keeping them. Right, down you go, Mr. Kabura. There we go. Oh, I pulled the hook again. I wonder if I'm not. I wonder if I'm not striking hard enough to actually set the hook. They've got a really hard sort of armor plated top lip. So part of the key to catching them is using a really fine gauge hook which I am using small hooks but maybe the rod doesn't have the power to set the hook let's try to be a little bit more aggressive on the strike let's see what happens Quite a funny bite from a gurner, they almost sort of just move up and mouth it. It's quite often not a very aggressive take. So you just have to feel for the weight to come on. There we go. Getting it on. Pulling string. It's actually quite good fun when you get the bigger models. They get into a bit of current. Jesus, Glenn, what are you doing? It's another good sized gurnard. Another bit of bait, drop it down, hopefully we can turn it into another gurnard. Oh. There 
we go. Another gurnard. Oh. Pulled the hook. Yeah, um, the water's quite clear at the moment as well, I noticed. Being the Manukau Harbour, it's usually quite muddy. But not today. It's actually pretty clear. Oh, keep pulling the hook. Something's biting the skirts on this. Getting some really weird bites. Yeah, I know, this can be a problem in the Manukau, there's red weed. That can be a real problem. Don't know whether you can see it, there's actually a little seal out there. It's chilling on the surface of the water. Might come over and see me. He's heading this way. So I didn't get on camera. But just before, I was winding my lure up and I had it right beside the ski and a gurn had followed it all the way up. It wasn't hooked, it was just following the lure all the way up, almost to the surface. Pretty crazy, I've never seen that before. But it just goes to show they will chase something from the bottom right to the top. to have it and man that water's clear I can already see him another gurnard smaller one that time I might hook and send him on his way must be a car why swimming up Well, it seems like I'm just getting more and more of this red weed. And when you start striking that, it's not going to stop until the tide starts slowing down again. Unless you um, move spot. So, I'm going to pack up. And I think I'll just go for a cruise. I might try a bit of drift fishing. Yeah, try a bit of drift fishing and um, see what happens. Stuff on the edge of the sandbars, I think. Yeah, look at that. When that starts happening, it's, it's not going to catch any fish. That's the lure that did the damage today. Little beady eye kabura.
pack this anchor up and get it out of the way. We're not going to need that again today. No, never known the Manukau Harbour to be so clear. That's crazy. Two and a half metres and I can actually see the bottom. Don't know whether you can see it down there. I guess small tides and no rain means the water clarity is really nice. It's actually quite strange. I'm not sure whether it's thunder I can hear or just the planes because Auckland Airport's actually just over there. But there's not a lot of planes flying at the moment because of the whole COVID-19 situation. But it looks like there's a big shower over that way, so there might be a thunderstorm coming. But I'm going to gap it back to the ramp and get off the water before that hits. Well, we're all packed up. Uh, I think I'll head back to the ramp and go home. It's just gone 12 o'clock now, so that was a couple hours fishing. About one hour of good fishing and then the rest was a bit quiet. Probably should have got out a bit earlier just for the last of the um, outgoing tide and we would have picked up a few more but we caught probably catch half a dozen, let three of them go again and um, kept three big ones so I'm happy with that. It'll be a few meals for me. There's a couple of other boats heading back to the ramp but it's a pretty nice day out here. Gears all packed up, anchors away. Let's go! Quite a nice boat ramp this one, it's two lane with a nice big pontoon and a bit of a um, breakwater wall there. You get a lot of current coming through here so it can be quite a mission to dock a boat but you get used to it. This is where we have all the um, big county sport fishing competitions. There's a gantry for Wayne Marlin there and that big green shed in the paddock in the distance. That's where they have the prize givings. Yeah, it's quite a good little setup. There's a big paddock behind the shed that they do camping in as well for the big three-day comps. But no, it's quite a cool club to be a part of. <laughs> 